Welcome to the History of Christianity podcast with Stephen Bedard. When it comes to the Apostle Paul, we are fortunate to not only have an account of his life and ministry in Acts, but to have a number of his letters as well. In this episode, we will take a look at Paul's letters, giving a brief explanation of the context. Before getting into each letter, I must make it clear that not all scholars accept every letter in the New Testament as coming from Paul. While some in the early church identified Paul as the author of Hebrews, there are questions about that right from the beginning. Beyond Hebrews, more recently, there have been other questions about Paul's authorship. There are seven letters that are almost universally accepted as being by Paul. These include Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, 1st Thessalonians, and Philemon. The rest of the letters are considered contested. I'm not convinced by many of the arguments against Pauline authorship. One example is that of 2 Thessalonians. The reason why many reject 2 Thessalonians is that they see a different eschatology in 2 Thessalonians compared to 1 Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians, Jesus is said to be coming as a thief in the night, whereas in 2 Thessalonians, the man of lawlessness must come first. You can't have an eschatology where Jesus returns without warning and at the same time have something that must take place first. Or can you? In Matthew 25, we read about signs that will precede the second coming. And in the same chapter, the image of Jesus coming like a thief is also there. The letters that are rejected more than any others are the pastoral epistles consisting of Titus and 1st and 2nd Timothy. It's argued correctly that the style is different from that of the letters to Galatia or Romans. But that's to be expected. These are personal letters sent to young men that Paul mentored. They were also written later in Paul's life, relatively close to his death. It should be no surprise that these letters sound different. One final comment about some of the differences between the genuine and the contested letters. It is clear from the epistles that Paul used secretaries. That is, he did not physically write the letters, but dictated them to someone else. And this person is often named in the epistle. We don't know how exact the secretaries kept to Paul's words. Obviously, the basic content is the same, or else Paul would not have let the letters go out. But it's very possible that the letters were affected by the individual style of the secretaries. The order of Paul's letters in our New Testament are not chronological, but rather according to size. So Romans is longest, and then 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and so on. If I could change anything about our New Testament canon, it would be to put Paul's letters into chronological order, as I believe there's something to be gained by noticing the development of his thought. What is the oldest of Paul's letters? That's a good question. We don't really know other than it is either Galatians or 1 Thessalonians. Why don't we know? It all comes down to which part of Galatia Paul was writing to and how that fits with what we know of Paul's travels from Acts. Unlike Rome or Philippi or Ephesus, Galatia is not a city. It is both a region and a Roman province. Here's where it gets complicated. There's an ethnic Galatia and a Roman Galatia. Ethnic Galatia is the northern part of the Roman province of Galatia, and it's comprised of people who migrated there from Gaul. These Galatians would be a Celtic people. The people in the southern part would be ethnically Greek. The Romans merged that southern part into ethnic Galatia, thus forming a Roman province of Galatia. If Paul was writing to the southern Galatians, this letter would be earlier. If Paul was writing to northern Galatia, the letter would still be relatively early, but would be after 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. While I'm not dogmatic on the subject, I lean toward a southern Galatian audience, and thus consider this the earliest of Paul's letters. Galatians was likely written around 49 AD, and is probably the earliest Christian document that we still have. What is the purpose of Galatians? The Galatian churches came about through Paul's preaching of a gospel of grace. After Paul left, some other Jewish Christians came along and insisted that the Galatians, as Gentiles, needed to become Jewish proselytes before becoming followers of Jesus. These Judaizers insisted that the Galatians take on the Torah, or the law, with the sign of circumcision. While Paul had no problem with Jewish Christians keeping the law, as long as they did not rely on it for salvation, Paul taught that Gentiles who took on the law were abandoning the true gospel. One of the unique aspects of Galatians is that it lacks the normal thanksgiving portion of a letter. 
The reason for this is that Paul was so upset that the Galatians were considering taking on the law that he had nothing to be thankful for. Paul's argument is basically that followers of Jesus live not by the law, but by walking with the Spirit. The Spirit guides us into right living beyond just rule keeping. The next letter by Paul is 1 Thessalonians, which was likely written around 50 AD. Thessalonica is a city in Greece. This letter, like Galatians, was written to deal with a specific problem. The Thessalonians had some mistaken ideas about eschatology, that is, the doctrine of last things. Like most people in the early church, including Paul, they believed that Jesus would return during their lifetime. They understood that when Jesus returned, his followers would be glorified, that is, given new transformed bodies that are built for eternity. So far, so good. Their concern was for the Christians who died before Jesus returned. Would they miss out on what would take place when Jesus returned? Paul corrects them by explaining the resurrection of the dead. When Jesus returns, the dead would be raised first, receiving their new bodies. Then those living would be transformed into the same kind of body. This letter was followed by 2 Thessalonians, which was written shortly after the first letter. This second letter also has to do with eschatology, but a different problem from the first letter. This time, the Thessalonians were afraid they had missed the return of Jesus. Paul assures them that Jesus had not returned yet, as his return would be preceded by the appearance of the lawless one, someone often associated with the Antichrist. Since he had not appeared yet, neither had Jesus returned. The next letter is 1 Corinthians, which was written around 54 to 55 AD. Paul wrote this letter because of a number of serious problems at the church in Corinth. One problem was that the church was divided, some affiliating with Peter, some with Apollos, some with Paul, and some with Christ. You might wonder why Paul would have a problem with those who affiliated with him, or especially with those who affiliated with Christ. The problem is that they use these labels to divide the church, the body of Christ, which is supposed to be united. Another problem was that the Corinthians had an over-realized eschatology. That's just a fancy way of saying that they thought they had already reached the pinnacle of the spiritual life. They were proud of their possession of spiritual gifts, and they placed speaking in tongues as the highest. This was such a problem that they rejected the bodily resurrection because they couldn't imagine a spiritual state higher than what they had already achieved. One of the most beloved chapters of the Bible is 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. This was not written to be read at weddings, but it is placed strategically between a teaching of the church as the body of Christ and a teaching of how that is represented in a worship service. It all hinges on love. 2 Corinthians was written shortly after that. This letter covers a number of topics, and this has led some scholars to suggest it is a composite letter. It's more likely that Paul needed to address a number of problems within the Corinthian church. Romans was written around 57 AD. Unlike Galatia, Thessalonica, and Corinth, Paul had not been to Rome, although he knew some of the Roman Christians. Understanding the background of the Roman church is vital to understanding this important letter. It's likely that the Roman church began with Jews who had been visiting Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and had become followers of Jesus. The Roman church was initially Jewish in composition. At some point in the 40s or early 50s, the Roman emperor Claudius expelled the Jews from Rome. He didn't care if they were traditional Jews or Christian Jews. They all had to go. This left Rome with just the few Gentile Christians that remained. The Roman church began to grow again, this time from people with a Gentile background. When the Jews were allowed to return to Rome, the Jewish Christians, who had been the majority, now found themselves in the minority. This mixed church found itself in conflict. The Jewish Christians thought they had an advantage with their law, and the Gentile Christians thought they had an advantage because of their freedom. Paul's letter to the Romans should be read within this context. In the early 60s, Paul was imprisoned and wrote four epistles, often called the prison epistles. They include Colossians, Philemon, Ephesians, and Philippians. Philemon is different from the others in that it was written to an individual. One of Philemon's slaves had escaped and eventually encountered Paul, 
The slave became a Christian, but Paul wanted him to return to his master. Philemon had the right to do anything he wanted to his slave, but Paul wanted him to welcome the slave as his brother in Christ. Colossians and Philippians are significant in that they provide clear witness that Paul understood Jesus to be God incarnate. The final letters written by Paul in the mid-60s are the pastoral letters. These are 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus, although chronologically Titus belongs between 1st and 2nd Timothy. Many scholars reject the Pauline authorship of the pastoral epistles, but I'm not convinced of their arguments. There are differences between these epistles and some of Paul's other epistles, but the ones the scholars are comparing them to are a decade earlier, and we need to give Paul freedom for his style to change. Also, the purpose of the letters are different. The earliest letters were written to churches dealing with specific issues. The pastoral epistles were written to Paul's friends, young men that he had mentored and whom he wanted to share his last pieces of wisdom before he was executed. Finally, the church never saw a problem with Paul's authorship of the pastoral epistles. They were intelligent enough to recognize that Paul didn't write Hebrews or 3 Corinthians. Why is it that only in the last couple hundred years did people begin to question their authorship? I would suggest that Paul did indeed write these epistles near the end of his life, just before his execution, under Nero's reign. This gives you a brief summary of the letters of Paul and the context surrounding them. Thank you for listening to this episode of the History of Christianity. You can find this episode and all sorts of other resources on my webpage, hopesreason.com. And also find the History of Christianity page on Facebook. Finally, if you would like to support this podcast, I encourage you to go to patreon.com slash hopesreason. Even $1 a month will help this podcast to continue. Thank you and God bless.